Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? 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 Can everybody hear me? Hear me? Can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? Okay, awesome. So, um, just give me a second, um, to, let's see. Um, I am planning on making a tray today. Uh, so, um, we're going to try to start with this camera. Um, and I don't know why it's showing up black on the other, on my phone. Um, so let's see. Okay, you can see two pictures. You can see two of me. Or is one black? Okay. I am going to put the camera so that you can see um the resin pour um but i'm gonna talk to the main screen first okay Okay, um, can you see the, um, the resin um, below?
Okay. I'm just going to have to wing it because it's not showing up on my screen. Okay. So I went ahead and I made, um, so I'm going to be talking to this screen for now. Um, just so that we can kind of get an idea of how I start this whole process. Like I said, I want to show you how I do everything from beginning to end. Um, and the only thing is, uh, I can't take you outside to do any of the, um, the, the, the last step, which is, uh, the, uh, using of my, uh, my Dremel because we're having severe, severe, uh, thunderstorms right now. And I mean, like just a little bit ago, the, there was a huge, uh, like blast of lightning and thunder outside that it like cut out all of everything. Um, okay. Well, I, the finished piece is going to be the, uh, item that I'm going to show you afterwards. What I want to show you first is uh, how we get to that point. So, um, you should be seeing an empty, right now, an empty uh, uh, resin mold. So, but I want to just let you uh, know is that right now we're having severe thunderstorms. I can't take you outside because it's just entirely too dangerous. Um, I want to say maybe about 45 minutes ago, um, I mean, like there was lightning and thunder outside and it was it's so loud and so close that the electricity went out, my internet went out, the TV went out, everything went out. And um, it, it literally felt like the lightning was inside of my house. Um, so yeah, so I'm not going to go outside. What I'm going to do is I will show you, um, everything up until I, I, until I unmold the item and, uh, give you an idea of how I would then, uh, use my Dremel tool to grind the edges and then pour the, uh, the glaze on it, but I'm not going to take it outside. So, cause that just, um, it obviously is not safe. So first, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, talk to you on, uh, the, um, uh, this, this screen here so that you can see. Okay. This is the, uh, this is the Dremel, um, but let's first start off uh, with how I get everything started. So first off, um, I have uh, my uh, measuring cup here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out my part A and my part B of the resin. So um, I did get um, some resin. Uh, my favorite, the Padule, which is, so here's the part V and it doesn't matter which, um, you measure first or second, just as long as it is equal parts, it has to be equal parts. Um, and I'll explain to you, uh, in a little bit why you have to have it equal parts. And then it will, uh, when you buy, uh, the epoxy resin, whether it's this brand or any other brand, it will tell you which is part A and which is part B. And they always have to be um, equal. It's kind of like baking. Um, like when you're baking a cake or cookies or anything like that, when it says one tablespoon or one teaspoon, then obviously, um, that's, um, you know, what, what you need to do. So it has to be exact because otherwise the cookies or the cake is not going to come out correctly. So I went ahead and I opened up the resin, uh, part A. And I'm going to take 
um, my uh, cup here. And if you can see, there are markings on here. Um, and the nice thing that Peduo does is they give you these cups in with, um, uh, I can um, do that. Uh, and you can do it actually with uh, a UV flashlight like this. So, which is, it, and I don't want to shine it, but it does, it's, it's like a black light. Um, but it, while it says that it's supposed to be faster, I find it, you're, you have to sit there and you have to hold the, um, the flashlight over said item, um, until it's cured. And so for me, um, what I like to do is just put the glaze on all of the items and then I will um, take it outside and I'll put it on one of my silicone mats um, and let it, the sunlight UV uh, rays cure it. And I find that is a little bit quicker and easier for me because I can just glaze a whole bunch of stuff and then put it on my UV mat, uh, my silicone mat, which is the mats that you see, the, the blue and the pink mats, um, put it out uh, outside and as put as much as I can fit out there on there and just let it uh, cure that way. So, um, so I'm gonna take um, my part A and um, so we're gonna um, do this oval tray, which I know you guys have seen, but I figured I have multiples of this particular mold. So this way you can kind of see what it's like. Obviously you guys have seen me pour it, but I want you to see me pour it put the coloring and the glitter and all of that stuff in. And then, um, then I will show you obviously how I unmold it, how I then will um, use the Dremel tool. And then I will show you um, the, uh, the glaze that I use, which is actually UV resin. So um, I believe uh, the, this particular, uh, uh, mold normally takes about uh, 80 milliliters of uh, resin. So what it has to be is, is half part A, which is this, and then half of the part B. So, um, so since we need 80, so I'm going to do 40 milliliters of the part A. So like I said, it's like baking. Um, and so I'm pouring here 40 milliliters of the, um, part A. So it's, I mean, as you can see, this is one part and then this is the part B. And um, I will take the part B and pour it on top of there. Uh, and it should equal to 80. And I apologize if I am a bit shaky today. Um, because of the weather, I am flaring today. Uh, so... Uh, yeah, it's not fun. So, um, I'm going to try to see if I can hold this up so you can see the separation. So if you can see the separation between the two parts, part A is on the bottom and part B is on the top. Now it shouldn't have any sort of like reaction right now because I haven't mixed anything. It's when I start mixing them together is when the chemical reaction starts. And then um, that's when I need to start moving as far as adding coloring, um, the alcohol inks, glitter, and all of that stuff. So, um, and I actually um, got, let's see, it was from, where did I get it from? I got some happy mail 
and it was from I'm sorry my brain is just blah today um but it did somebody bought for me off of my uh wish list and <sighs> forgive me for being not like but I did I was lucky enough to get and thank you I I, I know who it is that is that got me this um but this is a rechargeable resin uh, mixer. So um, I'm, I don't want, I want to try it, but I'm like really nervous about uh, trying it out because I don't want like resin like flying everywhere, mainly because I have my laptop and my phone. Usually when I'm doing all of this stuff, um, I am, you know, I just use my popsicle sticks. So, um, yeah, it's my, like, if you can see my hands are shaking because the pain is just off the charts today. But I said, we're going to power through this because I want to do this for you guys. All right. So I went ahead and I, like I said, it's equal parts A and B. And then I'm going to take my popsicle stick and I'm going to start mixing. And um, let, I'll see if you can see up close when I start mixing how the two parts are starting to mix together. And you can see they're getting cloudier. It's getting cloudier and cloudier and cloudier. Yeah, um, we've had thunderstorms for the last three or four days. So, yeah, I, I apologize. I'm a little, like, wonky today. Um, so, um, I'm stirring, and this is what it looks like when it is not mixed um, well. You need to make sure... Uh, when you are uh, pouring your resin with part A and part B, that you mix part A and part B uh, well. And the way you know that it's well mixed is that this cloudiness that you see will then turn clear. And we'll watch it go clear together. And... Uh, Yeah, so that's what I'm planning on doing with the rechargeable um, resin mixer. Um, when I do, like when I make the resin for my boxes, is that's what I'm probably going to use it for. And then when I get comfortable with the rechargeable um, uh, resin mixer, I, I will use it for my lies because it'll be faster um, and less painful for me. So um, as you can see, the, the parts are still separate. It's still cloudy. And this is the part that having uh, chronic pain and fibromyalgia sucks. Is because it's not something that is like, oh, you're just going to mix for 30 seconds. And it's just like magically mixed. So, and that's why um, when I said in my um, other videos that if you want to, you know, I know that not er like these lives are for everybody um, when it gets to be a little long that I wanted, you know, whoever wanted to participate, um, that it's going to be a little bit longer than it normally is. So as you can see, it's getting clearer. And you'll know when it's done, when the uh, resin is completely clear. That's when you know that both parts are mixed together well. And you see that it's getting 
uh, clearer and clearer, but I can still see. I don't know if you can see. Um, that is still cloudy. Um, it's usually better to mix one way or the other. It's kind of like, like I said, when you're baking a cake or whatever, um, it does tend to make bubbles. But the thing that I like about the duo is, is that, um, if I mix it either way, um, while I do generate bubbles, usually the bubbles go away on their own. So, I mean, I can still mix the other way. So sometimes I'll just do that just to get it going a lot faster. And I will, I'm going to show you here. Yeah, it will. Um, and actually, uh, I have a friend that lives in uh, the UK. She actually, she also has fibromyalgia and she is also um, a resin uh, maker. And what she has, which is really cool, which we can't, um, I don't think we can get here in the US, is um, it has a little uh, drum and you can pour your part A and part B in it and you put a metal stick in there and you hit a button and it actually mixes the resin, kind of like a cement mixer um, on it uh, that you see like, you know, on a truck and it mixes the resin um, by itself. So as you can see, it's starting to get clearer and clearer. We're almost there. So you can see we're almost there. It's a lot less cloudy. Let me take a look here. But this is the reason why I like the duo is as you can see, like I am mixing either way and you can see some bubbles, but not a lot. Um, some other resin brands, um, if you do that, you're going to like end up with like froth everywhere. Um, and Illumilite, Illumilite is one of those brands. I, um, it's my second favorite brand. The problem with that, it's very unstable. Okay, so I'm gonna, um, and I don't know why, whatever reason my uh, phone camera is not showing up, um, but I am trusting that you guys can see it, but I'm gonna show you what it looks like from the top level. Um, so you can see what it looks like when it is completely mixed, because it is it's now completely mixed and uh, it is, it's clear. And what this is what it should look like before you even attempt to pour it into your mold. Um, so if you can see that, 
Um, it is clear, uh, other than, you know, of course, the few bubbles that there are, uh, it's no longer cloudy. And um, you should now be able to pour it into the mold. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to pour it into the mold. Um, so um, just one second. Let me give it one more stir. And I'm going to pour it into the mold. And I always scrape because, as you all know, as it ain't cheap. And I'm scraping it all into the mold. All right. So, and then I am going to move my stick around just to make sure that we've got it all good to go here. And I poured a little bit less because we're going to do Petri dish today because I did the Petri dish on uh, the other piece of uh, resin. Uh, so first, though, I am going to add a little bit of glitter. So yes. Um, yes, exactly. And I, um, I don't want to waste anything. Um, cause I mean, like it's, it's expensive and I don't want, you know, obviously to, uh, yes. And, and it also can make it so that the resin doesn't cure properly. So you gotta make sure that you get everything that you poured in into, uh, into the mold. So I'm going to put in some glitter. We're going to go with some, uh, semi-fine iridescent. And we're going to use this, um, mermaid glitter here. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put the glitter in first. And this is just me, whatever. You know how I do things. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take quick, I'm gonna take this pop I'm going to reuse this popsicle stick first because uh, I haven't used any color. We're going to just swirl this around just a little bit. Get it into the edges. Um, and I will show you what happens if you add too much color, if you add too much glitter. Because you can't actually use watercolor uh, paints to color uh, your resin. I wouldn't recommend it. Um, but you can if you're starting off um, buying uh, watercolors. But because it's watercolor, it will make the resin unstable if you add too much. And I'll show you what happens when you add too much of anything. So just give me one second. So I'm going to show you on the other camera. Okay, so I made this last night. Okay, so this is a, um, if you can see, it's supposed to be a butterfly. And I poured this last night. Um, and I used alumina, aluminite. And this is the reason why I don't like aluminite because it, it can be really um, iffy. And so um, I did it as a Petri dish. It's supposed to be like blue and some black and um, I, you know, obviously I use my pusher and some glitter and stuff like that, but this is cured already. This is supposed to have cured for um, at least, let's see, I would say close to 12 hours. 
and it should be um, pretty rock hard right now. But this is what happens. This is what happens when you don't measure properly or you add too much. Do you see how it's bent? It's bending. And I can actually, if I wanted to, I can actually take this, you watch, and it, I can rip it. So that's why I say that you have to make sure that when you're doing this, you're doing it as accurately as possible. So because the reason why I don't like, this is the reason why I don't like certain brands is because it, also the weather will, uh, um, will affect resin as well. So the more humid it is and all that stuff, it will also do that. Just like baking, it will um, affect it as well. So this, this is rubbish now. This is garbage. This is going to go right into the rubbish. So um, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to um, pour our colors. Um, so I picked um, a lake. I picked a plant. And then I, we're going to do a little bit of black. And I always shake before I put in. And in no particular order. So I'm, let's see. I'm going to see, we're going to see if we can get a little bit of a design here. And get the ink to cooperate a little bit. So that's the lake. And then this is the ash. And then lastly uh, is the eggplant. Now I can't, uh, I, I tore the butterfly because I wanted to show you exactly what happens. Uh, what happens when you don't uh, mix things uh, properly. So uh, I did this on purpose last night. Okay, so as you can see, I put all my alcohol um, ink in. Now we're going to use, where did it go? There it is. All right. And we're going to do the white now. Now, granted, I may have put the colors in in a specific spot. Oh, hey, Cassie. Thanks for stopping in. Um, and hey, um... Hey, uh, hey, Zoila. Hey, everybody. And yes, if you could give me a thumbs up, that'd be fantastic. Um, I'm hoping that this is helping everybody, educating everybody. I don't know. Um, so, okay. So now we're going to do the white. And even though I put the colors in a specific, specific spot, as you know, the ink will do what it wants. Okay, so now we're going to go in for the second, second round. And I only do two rounds because otherwise it may kill the resin.
Okay, so that's the purple. This is the blue. And then last is the black. And essentially the idea is you want to cover exactly where you laid everything down. Sometimes that's hard when you're like using the same color, like same color palette. Like if you do um, different shades of green. So, um, so now we're going to go in with the last layer of white. Okay. Um, so as far as how much is too much, um, it's a matter of making sure that you're paying attention when you're pouring it in. And it also depends on the brand. Um, because like I said, I have tested several brands of uh, resin and so far, Padul is the only brand that even if I just make a minuscule um, like overage of measurement, like say just by uh, like, I don't know, just a 0.2% um, uh, milliliter, I don't usually have any problems. You just have to make sure that when you are pouring, you are getting at, it's like, so I guess you could say uh, the ideal way to pour it is, is to have your measuring cup, like you would do with baking, is um, to have your measuring cup. And um, here, I'll give you an example. So say when, um, when you're baking, usually when like, say you're pouring oil, right? Or water, you would set your uh, measuring cup on a flat surface and I'll show it to you here. You should take part uh, A and pour it in so that you get up to say 40 if that's what you're looking for. Then you would take part B and you would take your next 40 which would then bring you up to 80, right? Because that's equal, 40 plus 40 is 80 and then you would go ahead and mix. Um, now, if you do, like, let's say you're, um, you're measuring and you do 20 or say you do 40 and then whoops, I got it all the way up to hundred. No bueno. You're going to have to dump that because it's not going to cure. So, um, so yeah, it, it's important that when you're measuring, um, Usually I will uh, do my best to get it as close to those lines as I possibly can. Um, and the best way to do it is to set it on a flat surface so that when you pour each part, whether it's, you know, 20, 40, 60, whatever, because obviously you can get bigger measuring cups. Um, you can um, you can then measure whatever it is, just as long as um, you are measuring equal parts. So if you are going to do 20, you're going to measure another 20, which will bring you to 40. Um, or if you're doing 40, you're doing another 40, which should bring you up to 80. Um, or 50, and that, and then another 50 should bring you up to 100. So does that kind of uh, that makes uh, sense. And then um, the other part is, is to make sure you don't put too much uh, of coloring into your, um, your project. So whether it's too much mica, uh, too much alcohol ink, um, I honestly, 
if you're starting out, um, I can understand because when I started out, I used uh, watercolor. Um, if you're going to do that, use very, very, very small amounts of watercolor paint um, because of the fact that it has water in it. When you enter uh, water into uh, the resin, it you uh, you're going to offset the chemical balance. So um, I did that. And I got away with it because I would just uh, add it just a little bit um, at a time to make sure that I got in the color that I'm looking for without overdoing it. But um, you want to make sure, obviously, that uh, the amount of color that you're aiming for is... Uh, um, is enough to achieve the color that you want without overdoing it. Because if you do that, um, you will end up with an uncured item, uh, like with the butterfly. Um, and that's what I did. So that's why I did what I did yesterday. I poured um, just this, uh, you know, it's a small, um, this small mold. And it just used a little bit of resin, or yeah, a little bit of resin. And I just used the the Aluma Alumalite because I I honestly I don't really like that resin. And then yes, you can use uh, acrylics, uh, you can use uh, watercolors, but like I said, you have to use it very sparingly because there is um, there might be water in it. Um, anything that has water in it may offset any of the uh, chemical balance in the resin. So once you because I have had it where I have added like acrylic in it and then my uh, resin completely seized up before I had even a chance to pour it into the mold. Um, so I don't know if you guys are watching um, how the resin is um, in the mold. Did you want me to go ahead and uh, I can swirl it around if you like. And um, I actually sometimes will just color the whole um, uh, item with just uh, with just glitter. Um, I'll show you. So like this this particular item I made, just glitter. So okay, let's let's swirl. So using the popsicle stick, um, let's see, what do we want to do? Let's, let's do it this way. Cause I still kind of want to see the white with the glitter. Okay. All right. So that we're leaving it just like that. I'm not going to fiddle with it anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scooch this particular uh, item. I'm going to put my colors away before they get everywhere uh, because the alcohol inks do stain. Um, so just give me one second. Let me put all the alcohol inks away. And then I will show you me unmolding uh, the one that I finished the other day. So this is what I did the other day. This is alcohol ink. And I didn't swirl anything it's got um some orange gold uh green uh and black and red in it so you can see here this is the top or i guess the bottom is and then what i did was i uh took some clear resin and then uh 
put some glitter in it and pour it on top after everything has cured. Okay, so I'm going to mold it right now. So this is how I do it. I usually run my finger on the edges, which right now is no fun, but I'm sucking it up. All right, now are you ready to see what it looks like? This is always my fun part to see what it looks like on the inside after I poured. Okay, so this is the thing. Sometimes it's a struggle. Okay. Now I'm going to show you. That's what it looks like. So you can you see the white. Now I'm going to try to show you what it looks like with Petri dish. Can you see that? What the white does? That's why I call it a pusher. Because it pushes that alcohol resin or alcohol ink down. So it kind of looks like a uh, uh, stalagmites and stalactites if you if, if any of you know what those are so it's like or you can turn it upside down this is what it looks like so th this is what I did when I poured it okay so this is this here is what I started with. Added the um the glitter on after uh the first layer cured, and then this is what so when you if you were to get this, this is what you would have displayed uh in your home. Uh and this is what it looks like on top. This is the bottom and then this is the top. And then like I said, this this is my favorite part. Just looking at the sides. I just stare at the sides all day long. I know, right? And then I like the fact that like the white kind of peeks through all the color. And then of course, um, the sides are kind of clear, but not clear. And then of course you can see the glitter on the bottom. Okay, so now the next step is, is to take this particular finished item because this is, this is like three quarters of the way finished. There's a couple more steps that need to go. Um, I t need to take, um, this is a generic Dremel. I think I got it on Amazon for like 15 bucks and all you do you uh, you charge it with a USB through the wall and there are three speeds um, this one is called uh, tack life rotary tool you can spend um, you know like 50 or 60 uh, yeah I know I really do I have to figure out something I just 
don't know what to do um, without like killing the whole piece. Um, like I really want, maybe I should drill it on the bottom. Um, and then not glaze it. I don't know. I'd have to think of something. Um, so anyway, so there's the, I got this drill. I do have a Dremel, but the thing about the Dremel that I don't like is the fact that I have to, I have to plug it into the wall. Um, cause actually this needs to be done when you, when you, um, sand your items, um, I, I could stamp it, but I would have to take it out of the mold before it's, uh, fully cured. And that's not something I recommend because when I, cause I've done that, I've been really sometimes impatient because I want to see what it looks like. And I've taken it out of the, uh, the mold beforehand and, um, completely maligned the whole project. Um, but yes, I agree. I need to, um, figure out something, maybe a sticker or something, um, and, uh, put it before, yeah, like before I glaze it, put, put a sticker or something on the, uh, the item and then, and then glaze it. Um, but yeah, I agree. Um, cause I know I need to mark my work, uh, in some way. It's just all this time. It's never been something that I've really, uh, Oh yeah, that'll work too, Lori. Um, but I know like something, anything to make it like, this is, this is mine. Um, or like, you know, uh, uh, anything, I don't know. I'm sure I could figure out something. Um, but, uh, the thing is, is that before YouTube, uh, I've never, uh, shared any of this with anybody because I thought nobody really gave a rat's butt. Um, so like, for example, here, I'll show you what I've, um, I've made for my family for Christmas. Uh, all I have to do is glaze their stuff. So well, give me one minute. Um, oh, shit. Sorry. I forgot that I glazed some of these. Okay. Yeah, that's the other thing. Don't forget you do glaze stuff. Because you end up with crap on your hands. Sorry about that. Okay, so... I'm going to show you, um, cause I like to give homemade gifts to my family. Uh, uh, last year was coasters. I made, um, so I made, uh, coasters and on the inside of the coasters, it said Ohana. Um, so, uh, I am going to be giving paperweights, um, to my family. Uh, for Christmas. Yeah, I'm thinking either something inside or in a, I don't know, something. Because the thing is, though, is if the item is solid colored like this, um, it, I can't put uh, something solid. I'd have to actually etch it. Um, but I would need to have, I need to maybe... Uh, like, I don't know, figure out some, like some sort of stamp or something on, on the items. So, uh, so that's, that's what I'm doing, uh, this year. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do it really quickly. So it's going to be a little noisy. So, um, I'm just letting you know right now, 
I'm just going to do this for a couple of seconds so you just so that you can see and get an idea. So this is the uh, tool that I like to use because it's cordless. Uh, and then uh, how I go around the edges um, because uh, with the moles, you're, it, it's pretty sharp. So, um, so I'm going to hold this way so that you don't hear. Okay. So this is the sanding tool and this is the tray. So, um, normally what I do is I will take the tool and as I said, I normally don't do it. So I'm just going to do this for a couple of seconds, just for a fact. Um, It would melt. It would melt. Um, but I don't know if the end would show up the way I would want it. I think what I would need to do is actually, I think possibly like a sticker would be better. Um, cause I probably could buy like a thousand end stickers on Amazon and, um, put them on the item and then, uh, put my resin on top. So, I'm going to, um, I'm going to sand the edges on the tray. Okay. So, um, it's going to be, uh, a little noisy. Just, just hold on one second. So I'm just going to hold, I'm going to show you, it's going to be these edges here. So it's so that's essentially what it is, and it, it makes a mess. Um, so which is why I do it outside. Um, and like I said earlier, I'm I'm not gonna take uh, this outside because. Um, it's going to, it, we are having very bad uh, lightning storms right now. Um, and it is uh, entirely dangerous for me to probably take, uh, take it outside. So uh, if you want to give me two seconds, I will quickly sand this down. And then I will show you quickly how I uh, glaze this. Okay, so I just kind of uh, did a cursory uh, sanding of the edges um, so that it is not sharp anymore. And then um, I'm going to show you, standing up, um, how, I, uh, how I glaze it. All right, so this is the UV resin that I like. It's a Japanese brand. It's called Mr. Resin. Also, uh, is not cheap. Um, you can use UV resin, um, for some molds. Um, you can actually use it for Uh, the mold uh, that I got uh, from I think it was Maria wasn't it wasn't you that, that you that sent me these um yes I did that really quickly um so but I can use um uh, these particular uh, molds uh with this resin 
and I can put the resin in here and then I can actually set this outside and um, pull them out in maybe about a half an hour probably today um, because it's, it's yuck outside. It's raining and we have thunderstorms. All right. So, um, This is messy. So um I also check to see if there's any like lumps or whatever and there's actually a lump here so i'm going to sand that down Okay, so it's nice and nice and smooth. All right, so this is like this is almost done. Okay, so next what I'm gonna do is I wash it. So I'm gonna turn my laptop around so you can see um, my sink and what I normally do. Yeah, I hate the dentist. Oh my God, no. Last place I want to go. So uh, we're going to take a trip to my sink, if you can see it. So I'm going to wash it. Just with a little water, just to get the dust off. Don't worry, the drilling stopped. <laughs> okay. Grab a paper towel and I'm gonna dry it off. And you're going to want to dry it as best as you possibly can, okay? Okay, so everything feels really good. Now we're going to glaze. Okay, I'm going to do it standing up just for you guys. All right, so This is the glaze. Actually, I want to shut the other camera off.
Better? Is that better? Okay. Now? Is it better now? This is what happens when you mess with stuff. Technology. All right. So, you can buy one of these... Um, UV flashlights, sometimes they're really expensive. I spent, I spent 25 things on this dang thing. And sometimes I have to sit. Um, uh, I, uh, I have to sit with uh, this damn light. Uh, I know, I know. Uh, with this dang light on my stuff if I'm in the house for forever um, so it's just easier for me to take it outside and put it on my uh, silicone mat here um, but I, I'm not gonna do that with you guys on the live because we've been having lightning storms um, I'll do it after um, so um, this is the uh, the item that I just sanded and all you do so I kind of guesstimate how much I need and where do you go over here I know it's my husband is I, he's like it's not raining I'm like yes it is it's it like like at nine nine o'clock this morning it there was a strike of lightning that like literally looked like it was inside the middle of my house um there was this huge flash and a big boom my internet went out my TV went out and I had the most massive, like, I don't know, like my, I think my heart stopped for five seconds. It was not fun. So, okay. So I am, uh, moving the glaze, uh, to the edges with, And this is to help the edges uh, smooth and even out. And I do my best. And as you all know, um, I know, uh, Lori, uh, that particular airplane dealt with 30 minutes of uh, turbulence. There were people that got seriously injured. I think um, some flight attendants got hurt. Um, people got knocked out. It was bad. There was structural damage to the inside of the airplane and everything. Uh, so it was it was bad. 
Um, so, okay. So, um, I just, um, doing the glaze here. And the one thing about the Mr. Resin, it says that it doesn't, uh, is not, uh, Thanks, Doyla. Uh, it says that it's self-leveling, which means that it's supposed to level itself. Sometimes it just doesn't. Um, but I do my best to get it as smooth as possible. Now, um, Okay, so the, the airplane that was coming, I think they were coming here to Hawaii. Um, because we're having really bad thunderstorms, dealt with 30 minutes of uh, turbulence. And the turbulence was so bad that the mass came down. Um, people uh, like got knocked out. Um, the there was actual structural damage on the inside of the airplane uh they showed on the news people were being carted off um yeah i think uh it was the flight attendant she ended up i don't it, my husband said that he saw some photos where she um she was pretty hurt um due to all of the turbulence it was really really bad so that's what we've been dealing with for the last couple of days and will be continue, continuing to deal with uh, because in Hawaii, while we may not have snow, winter here is rainy season. So, and that's, that's thunderstorms. Really, Maria? No sound at all? I know if I hit the other button, it's I'm going to end up with uh, maybe I need to move closer. Is this better? Okay. So um, so yeah, it, it, right now is rainy season for Hawaii, so we get lots of rain. Uh, even though we don't get snow, we get lots of rain. I remember when I lived in Minnesota and of course, you know, there's lots of snow in Minnesota, but I remember my sister saying that one year they had gotten so much rain that one of the, uh, the dams broke and there were a lot of people that got hurt. There was a lot of homes that got lost. I think they had, it was like. You know how you hear about the hundred year floods? Um, hey Michelle, um the the they had gotten so much rain and they said it was like more rain than they had gotten in forty years. Um and that that's that's how it is here in Hawaii. All right, so um okay, so as you know with handmade things, um not everything is perfect. And I try my best to make it as smooth as possible on the bottom. The main thing that I try to make sure, or no, no, I make sure is that the edges are not sharp. I don't want anybody to get hurt. Um, I, cause, and I do, I, I work really, really um really hard on my resin items uh to make it the best that I can but I'm not I'm not Amazon I'm not Walmart um so uh as much as it really stinks when people tell me that my stuff is like not great um 
I'm sorry. I'm not a machine. I don't have a, like a actual like robot that makes this stuff for me. This is just me making it. So sometimes when I'm glazing, um, it takes me a while because I'm trying to make sure that the edges are not sharp um, and that the, the glaze itself um, is as smooth as it possibly can without caking on too much because uh, the UV resin is expensive. Um, So I will show you, all right. So this is not cured. And this is the cured. And this is what it looks like prior to me uh, taking it outside to be, uh, to be cured with the glaze. Um, so I'll probably take it outside in a little while. Not right now. Um, it looks like it stopped raining. Um, but I have several items that I still need to glaze. Um, but does anybody, I know it's only been an hour. Um, does anybody have any questions? Um, so here, let me scooch things over a little bit. So this is the before and this is the after. Yes, it is, Kim. Um, it is, um, if here, I'll show it up. Um, if you can see, it's Mr. Resin and it's um, Premium Craft Resin Hard Type. And it's uh, a UV LED compatible resin. Um, well, uh, Teresa, uh, it is, it, yeah, it does have a smell. Uh, Thris, uh, what do you mean? How can you glaze without the, without the sun, but bigger than the flashlight? Um, let's see, you could get, oh, I know what you could get. If you go on um, Amazon, you know how they have those uh, UV nail uh, lamps? You can buy one of those and you can stick the uh, items under there and cure it that way, but it will still take a while. Um, Cause on the box, ooh, oh my goodness. It says, um, it says, our UV resin cures fast. You can expect the following cure times. So if you get a 36 watt LED lamp, it takes about one to two minutes. I have yet, I have yet to see that happen. A 48 watt UV lamp, 46, four to six minutes. I haven't seen that yet either. Uh, indirect sunlight, 30 to 40 minutes. Um, I usually will set it out. Um, I will usually set it out on my lanai, and um, I will uh, use these mats that you see underneath the pink and the blue mats, and I will put as many of uh, the items that I want to cure on them, and then set them out on the railing now today i probably won't set them out on the railing i'll probably set them out somewhere but i need to cure several items so um that's that's what essentially from beginning to end how it's all done um as you can see it's a pretty lengthy process because this here 
is not done. Um, usually I open the door and the window, um, and, or, uh, you should wear a mask, um, and wear gloves. So, uh, Thris will know this, uh, do as I say, not as I do. The problem I have is, um, with, uh, gloves, I have incredibly small hands and even with extra small gloves, they do not fit. And if I put on gloves and I try to pour resin and I accidentally touch anything that is not cured, you're going to, I'm going to mess something up. Um, so I am content with, uh, do, you know, I guess dealing with getting, uh, the resin on my hands because I have, uh, this particular product, which Puduo also uh, sells, um, it's called a hand cleaner. So it's uh, basically a resin soap. Um, so if I get it on my skin, I will immediately use this and um, use it to wash off any residue um, that I have on my hands and I, then I will wash it with hand soap. Um, so, uh, so yeah, that's, that's what, how, how everything, uh, works essentially. Um, just because of how I just don't really okay is that better I think I'm just having problems today Okay, I think I'm just having problems today. I I think it's the weather. Um. So okay. So I'm going to wrap it up. Um. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this. I know it was a, it was about an hour and a half. Um. But again, like I said, I hope you enjoyed everything. You learned a little bit, and then um, right now all my boxes are sold out. Don't forget, I do have a giveaway going um, on at the moment. If you are uh, not subscribed, please subscribe and enter the giveaway um, because it is a giveaway for a Centro, a 40-pin Centro. Um, so, uh, so yeah, uh, on your way out, if you can give me a thumbs up. And um, hit the like button. Um, I mean, anything, comments, all of that stuff, uh, it helps me out. So thank you everybody for coming and I will see you guys later. Bye.